here's what my fear would be in yeah. doing it is like my desire to blink would yeah. be so yeah. overwhelming. Yeah. I'd break the little eye barrier. Of yeah. course I wouldn't, but I'd end up moving my head and you'd zap the wrong part of my right. eye and I'd be blind. Everyone, that's everyone's fear. You know, it turns out Valium is undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a question of how much, but the, the, it's a very good drug. And, and so, but to address what you, you brought up several things there. First is, a lot of patients fear that they'll do something to, to goof up the surgery. Yeah. And uh, there are a number of reasons why that really can't happen, but let's go through the procedure uh, from the beginning. Long before this patient ever laid down on this gurney to have this laser treatment done, their eye was digitally mapped using what we refer to as a wavefront sensing device. So. Think about this, we send in a very narrow beam of light with a laser and we look at how it bounces back from the cornea. It bounces back in a distorted fashion. So we send an ideal ray of light in or multiple rays of light in and they bounce back in a distorted fashion. The amount of that distortion allows us to map the- So you do a topo. Map. It's much more than a topographical map. It's the entire optical pathway of the eye from the retina to the back, all the way to the back oh, wow. and front. So we look at the entire distortion pathway. And there's more than one way to do this, by the way. There is a topography-based way to do this as well, which is very effective. But the one I'm describing to you is sort of the easiest one to, to think of. We send in a, a, a known uniform beam of light and look at how it bounces back from the back of the eye. That tells us what are the distortions present in this eye, how much nearsightedness, how much farsightedness, but also all of these physics terms of- We didn't do this in me, right? You only do this in someone who's going to be a candidate? We may have done it in you just for grins, okay, but okay. we, you know, we diagnostically, this is part of our workup for yep. laser vision correction. Um, and we look at how that how the uh, this particular eyeball, you know, Peter Atia's right eye distorts light as it goes through the optical pathway. This technology was developed for um, telescopes that have to contend with atmospheric distortion. So the way this works is that telescopes, and I'm talking about like Keck and the yeah. best ones in the world, they send up a diagnostic laser into the atmosphere and the distortion that that laser is encountering is adjusted for in real time with a deformable mirror, a very thin mirror. And the, that allows them to essentially correct for the distortions of the atmosphere in real time. And those are constantly changing. We have the benefit of not having to deal with real time evolving distortion, but we can take a snapshot of what are the distortions of Peter's right eye. And then we can build them into the laser vision correction that we do on Peter's right eye. Part of doing that means that we have to be able to track your eye. So we have to lock onto and register your eye with the, with the equipment and any movement that you make, part of your fear was I'm gonna mess it up. Well, the laser can track far more rapidly than you can move your eye. So while you're doing this, patients' eyes can be moving. They can. And it doesn't matter because the laser's moving. I mean, it's sort of annoying when they, you know, so we tell, we coach them, hey, look at the flashing light. Yeah. But that's really just to keep them in the ballpark of where the tracker can lock onto them. I like knowing I'm not the only one that has this ridiculous no, it, fear. It's not a ridiculous fear. Blinding first of all, himself. It's, by, first of all, not a ridiculous fear. Secondly, it's universal. When I say to, <laughs> when I say to patients, "Hey, I'm not going to let you do anything to mess this up," they're like, oh, thank, "Thank you, <laughs> thank you for saying that." That was the thing I was worried about because you know it. You don't want someone to laser your eye and you looked off to the side. Oh. <laughs> Disaster. Not only are you blind, we also gave you a brain tumor. That's right. Now. So the laser will not fire unless you are within its range of, of tracking and it will move faster than you can move. 
This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies.